everybody, welcome to Movie Time, I'm Sean. Warner Brothers announced with a press release this week that Ben Affleck is Batman. So there's a lot of commotion going over this, a lot of Twitter fanfare hate tweets all over the place saying that he is not going to be able to pull it off, he's not going to be able to portray a good uh, Bruce Wayne or Batman. I don't know where I stand. I do believe that he can pull off the Bruce Wayne aspect of this because uh, he, I believe that he, he kind of has that um, that stature already in his personal life. I think I believe that he could pull off the Bruce Wayne. Batman, on the other hand, though, he he definitely needs to bulk up and he definitely needs to uh, you know practice some kung fu or something like that. That's gonna be the tough part: is wearing that suit and really pulling off the Batman and right standing, especially standing right there next to you know Henry Cavill. If you guys have seen Superman, um, that dude's yoked. Is standing next to Superman and your Batman Ben Affleck how he looks right now that's not gonna like play out really well especially if they gotta fight so he's gotta pump it up you know gotta get, get to the weight room um, his acting chops he's gone back to some really good stuff lately in the town um, Argo he's doing a really good job and then he's also been working on his director stuff so he I think that's what's helped make him uh, a good actor or better actor I should say because he's seen it from a different angle so he understands uh, where his cues are better or what he should be doing what kind of expression he should make so I definitely think he's a good actor I'm one of the few people that actually like Daredevil I liked the director's cut a lot better than the original version of it um, there's two scenes at the most that I didn't uh, entirely enjoy I didn't really like the uh, the teeter-totter you know scene um, that was a little too I don't know, it's too out there for me, but at the same time it is a comic book film. And then uh, I wasn't a huge fan of uh, him and uh, Bullseye fighting on the big organ at the end. So other than that, I liked Daredevil, I liked the, the director's cut the best. I think that he could pull off Bruce Wayne and we'll see about if he can pull out, if he could pull off Batman. We will see about that. Um, but everybody else out there, you know, uh, what's your opinion? Let's see what you guys, uh, what you guys think of this decision by Warner Brothers. Jumping over to the other side of coin now, going to Marvel news. Uh, Fox has announced that filming has uh, ended for X-Men Days of Future Past. This gets me really excited because this means that we are that much closer to seeing this movie. I cannot wait to see this movie. I'm so excited about this. The Wolverine movie really got me pumped up to see this movie. I can't see what, can't wait. I cannot wait to see what kind of awesome things they have going on in this movie. And with the ending of that filming, it's been announced this past week that Thor, The Dark World, has actually extended filming. Um, they're adding scenes, they're writing scenes, stuff for Loki, for Tom Hiddleston. Um, I really like this because he's a great actor. He pulls off Loki, one of the best villains in the game. There, there is this right now. He plays a wonderful Loki. He's a great actor, regardless of him being a villain, but he plays a great villain and he's a great actor. So this is awesome because that means hopefully we'll see a little bit more Loki in the film. Um, and maybe uh, this might be changing his fate. A lot of people think he might be dying in this movie just to kind of redeem himself from what happened in the Avengers. Maybe they're shooting some stuff to maybe extend his life lifespan in the Marvel Universe. Alright, so one of my, uh, one of my, I guess you could say one of my favorite comedic actors, he's not a big name guy, Adam Scott. He was in the show Party Down, that's where I really took notice of him. I've seen him in other things before Party Down. When I watched that Showtime show, uh, Party Down, it was awesome, funny, he was great in it. Um, he's also in movies like uh, Step Brothers um, and other stuff like that. His role for Hot Tub Time Machine 2 has been explained. He's actually going to be playing John Cusack's son. So we're going to be going into the next Hot Tub Time Machine. He's going to be playing the son, replacing the role of Cusack because he's not coming back, um, which is fine with me. He's a good actor, Adam Scott, and I really enjoy. Um, he has like a dry sense, uh, a dry comedy, uh, comedic sense. He has a, some sarcastic, uh, he has a sarcastic nature to him. So I really enjoy it because uh, I like to be that way myself in, in person, you know, my, my own world when I'm off of this thing. Uh, so I enjoy that. I relate to him. He usually plays those characters very well. We'll see what he can do in this next uh, movie. Also, one of Adam Scott's uh, new movies that he's been doing is called ACOD. Um, it's called Adult Children of Divorce. And I saw the trailer and I actually liked it. it it is a little comedic. It has some really good actors in it, um, good comedic actors, uh, Adam Scott, uh, Amy Poehler, Richard Jenkins from uh, Step Brothers, which he acted in with. The trailer looks pretty funny, and the movie definitely looks like it's interesting, and we'll see, we'll see how it turns out. Check out the trailer down below. 
One of my favorite movies from 2012 was a movie with not many actors in it. It was called Active Valor. I really enjoyed this movie. It was um, made based around um, training schedules for real life uh, Navy SEALs. And it was based around these real uh, training. So these training uh, exercises they did, they um, modified them so that they could film and put the storyline into them around those, those training exercises. Um, really love the film. Really emotional. It's a, a really good tribute to our troops out there, I feel. Um, and so because of the success it made uh, way sur surpassed what its budget was. Um, they're actually going to be working on number two. The only thing is number two is not going to be following Navy SEALs, Marines, or anything of that sort. It's actually going to be following. It's actually going to be following an elite group of SWAT officers. So, what do you guys think about this? Would you guys like it to go back to Navy SEALs, Marines, or something along those lines, or are you guys okay with it doing uh, SWAT police, uh, SWAT officers? I think there's going to be a little less of the heart uh, heartstrings are going to be pulled for the SWAT officers but um, I'm still interested in this movie especially if they go with the same kind of production value and storytelling as they did with the previous one where they use real life officers based on real life training things to make it look real um, I'm really looking forward to it if they go that route. Expendables 3 plot has been revealed and as we all know Mel Gibson is the villain in there and what they did tell was his relation to Barney. Barney's relationship with Mel Gibson's character um, Stonebrook, I think it is his name. Uh, what they do is they they started the first Expendables group, and somehow um, Mel Gibson's character was thought to be dead uh, for something uh, on a mission they were on. Barney, I guess, left him because he was thought dead, and now he's alive and well. And he's, I guess, this is where the conflict comes from. So I'm really excited to get this. They also leaked, uh, or someone got a photo of Mel Gibson on his way to the gym or out of the gym and dude is looking yoked but that dude was looking yoked just like in his Braveheart days this dude's been working really hard he's in his mid to late fifties so I mean this is really he's taking this serious he's, he wants to step up to the bar and meet it and excel it possibly maybe this will be a bounce back film for him we'll see where what happens you know and one last little tidbit of news, Amazing Spider-Man, there, there has been a set pick that has been revealed, and it is on a, I guess you could say a hangar door, and it says Sinister Six on it. So this could be a lead-in or a tease, because there has been announced that they were planning four Spider-Man movies, that the Sinister Six are going to somewhere happen in number three or number four. Um, this is really cool. Uh, I'm really excited to see what comes of this, what more information they're going to do because they've already shown teasers about uh, the symbiote um, suit and things of that nature. I'm really excited about it. Uh, the only thing that worries me is that is that Sony, this is the only Marvel property they have, so they better dig deep and get some other um, you know, accessory characters to help Spider-Man out if the Sinister Six are there because otherwise... I don't imagine um, in this like universe of the Spider-Man they're in, I don't imagine Spider-Man being able to defeat the Sinister Six all, all by himself. I think he needs help. So uh, my mind's racing with ideas. What about you guys? Alright guys, in theaters this week, I'm really psyched about this movie. I've been talking about it since I started uh, doing my YouTube clips. The World's End. I'm really excited about this. This is the last movie in the Cornell Trilogy. Uh, um, Simon Pegg, Nick Frost, Edgar Wright, um, back together for the third time, last one in the trilogy. Movie looks awesome. I can't wait to see this one, and you guys should be going out there to see it this weekend as well. I guarantee you'll have a good time. Uh, at some of your local theaters, I don't know if they're doing it today, but they did it yesterday at the, my local theater. They did the, they did the viewing of uh, Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, the midnight viewing of The World's End. Um, so if you're lucky, get that one, because that'll be, that'll be awesome sauce. Um, I'm really looking forward to this one, you guys. We'll see what happens after the week. Hopefully this will be number one spot. Alright, in movie of the week this week, I picked a movie that I had high hopes for, but I it fell flat for me, let's just say that. It has some pretty good comedic talent in it, and it has some pretty good actors in it. The movie is uh, 30 Minutes or Less, uh, starring Jesse Eisenberg. In this movie, he is a pizza delivery boy who is lazy, he's not achieving his full potential, um, he is in love, but the girl doesn't know it. The, it's, his best friend is the brother of this girl that he's in love with. They have a falling out at the beginning of the movie. It starts off pretty funny, actually. This movie starts off pretty funny. I'm like, oh, wow, if this is going to be how, it's it, how it is for the whole movie, I'm going to like this a lot. You know, It's going back and forth from you know, Danny McBride and, and Nick Swartzen to you know, Jesse Eisenberg and on set, uh, on Aziz Ansari. Aziz Ansari. And so it's telling you a little bit about both characters, all the characters a little bit.
Hey, Dad. Hey. Dad, pick it up. Oh. So they start off the movie in that manner, and it's really going pretty smoothly, I think, um, until they get to the point where he gets the bombs trapped on him. From there, I don't really, I, I, I don't like where they went with it. I think they couldn't decide, are we doing serious, or are we doing dr uh, comedy, or are we doing drama or comedy. Um, Jesse Eisenberg, he does have some comedic wit to himself, but at the same time, um, he is a dramatic actor as well. The other guys surrounding him are all pretty much comedic actors, but they slowed down the comedic side of this, and they went too drama heavy, I think. Um, I think this movie, if they meant it to be a drama, it could have been a decent one. Um, but uh, I think they should have stayed with comedy, uh, considering the cast. Um, they didn't do that, and that's where I felt this movie fell short. I was watching some behind-the-scenes stuff, and they were talking about how the characters interacted, and how the girl that he was in love with um, really brought light to the to to this dark, you know, situation, and and all this and that, and and from watching the movie I didn't get anything that the directors or the producers talked about I mean you if you look hard enough you can see a sliver of it but it doesn't come out naturally throughout the film and you don't get to know the character um, of the girlfriend enough to see that and you barely get to know uh, Aziz Ansari or Jesse Eisenberg's character enough to know it. You just know they have a relationship that they're repairing after they're falling out and, and even at that point the falling out was very like it almost seemed like it was an argument that they have on a normal basis, a, a very normal basis. So again, like I said, when they started getting to the points with the him strap, just the bomb strapped on him, I felt like it. The movie, that's where the movie went off the rails. They went away from the comedic side of the the whole, you know, storyline, the plot, and dialogue. And I, that's I feel where they they lost me. They they lost my interest in the movie. So if you guys are interested in seeing a movie that that has a couple laughs but there's nothing else to watch right now go check it out I don't recommend buying this at all don't recommend buying this at all but you know it's worth the view especially if you're a movie lover out there and you want to see as many movies as you can that way you can get the entire flavor of what's going on um, you know especially if you like Jesse, Eisen Jesse Eisenberg especially if you like Aziz Ansari Michael Pena Danny McBride Nick Swartz and like I said a bunch of names in this movie um, but otherwise don't go buy this movie maybe give it a rent and um, we'll see you know let me know if you like it and let me know if you like it. And let me know if you like it. Ginger! God. Ginger, shut up! So that's it for me. So that's it. So, that so that's it for movie time, guys. So that's it for movie time this week, guys. Remember to click. Oh my god! Stop shing her, Dad. She doesn't understand. Shh, doesn't she doesn't understand that, Dad? Don't. So that's it for movie time this week, guys. Remember to click the like, share, subscribe buttons down below. Uh, leave your questions, comments. Yeah. So that's it for movie time this week, guys. Remember to click the like, share, subscribe buttons. Remember to leave your comments, questions, inquiries, and ideas for movie of the week in the comment section down below. And let's get this conversation started off right. We'll see you next time.